This is our second annual celebration of Banned Books Week. Last year, it was just myself out on Michigan Avenue reading passages from some of my favorite banned books. And this year, we really wanted to expand the program and give students and faculty an opportunity to participate. As you can see just over my shoulder here, one of our students, Alex, is reading Ulysses, which in my book is a very brave choice to read aloud. Uh, we also have about 30 other books that we'll be giving away each day. As you can see, each of these books is labeled with one of the primary reasons it was banned, as well as some information all provided by the ALA and Office of Intellectual Freedom. Uh, so it's a really exciting time to expand it. When Bobby was sober enough to realize what he'd done, he could only call Eugene's name over and over, as if that would somehow bring him back. A few weeks later, in jail, Bobby hung himself with a bedsheet. We didn't even have time enough to forgive him. He punished himself for his sins. My father went on a legendary drinking binge. My mother went to church every single day. It was all booze and God, booze and God, booze and God. We'd lost my grandmother and Eugene. How much loss were we supposed to endure? I felt helpless and stupid. I needed books. I wanted books. And I drew and I drew and I drew cartoons. I was mad at God. I was mad at Jesus. They were mocking me, so I mocked them. It was just myself uh, in some costumes <laughs> that and I just ran out on the sidewalk by myself last year. And uh, I had an interesting reaction, a lot of people just passing by, but a lot of other people uh, really stopped and were interested. And many of those people were shocked to learn. I, uh, I had kind of a poster next to me last year with a list of the most common, uh, commonly challenged books. And a lot of people were really shocked to see how many of their favorites from both uh, childhood and adult made that list. What a shadow she threw on the wall, by her slender body. He felt that if his eye itched, she might blink, and if his muscles of his jaw stretched imperceptibly, she would yawn long before he would. Why, he thought, now that I think of it, she almost seemed to be waiting for me there, in the street, so damn late at night. He opened the bedroom door. He was not happy. He was not happy. He said the words to himself. He recognized this as the true state of affairs. He wore his happiness like a mask, and the girl had run off across the lawn with the mask, and there was no way of going back to knock on her door and ask for it. And it was one of the first books that like, I really just kind of marveled at the language in it and the way it was written. And it was like one of the first times I felt like I really appreciated just like the word choices and the way that sentences sounded. How do you feel about it uh, being uh, challenged? Um, <laughs> I mean, I think it's uh, pretty ridiculous. I think it's uh, something that everybody should at least try to read, at least take a glance at. Uh, and I think it's, you know, if you want to, you should be able to. And why is this event important to you? Um, I think it's uh, really uh, powerful symbolically to, you know, read it out loud and to spread knowledge of it. And I think it's a good chance to, you know, maybe show people books they didn't know about or books they didn't realize were banned or challenged. Has anyone tried to challenge anything from the Columbia College <laughs> Library? Um, I don't think so. I think we're pretty good about that. On a personal note, I think that uh, many of the books on this list uh, were so influential for so many of us growing up. Maybe we read them at an important time for us developmentally, either as teenagers or into adulthood. And I always uh, try and take the time this time of year to really consider to go back and think about who I was at the time that I read some of these books, uh, think about the influence they might have had on me, what shaping effect, and really consider who I might be if I wasn't given the opportunity to read those books. So I think it's a, it's a good time to be grateful for all the things that we have that we often take for granted here.